Hi, this is Aaron and Linda with Traveling Flamingo, and today we're back in Ontario, Canada, and we're going to be giving you a tour of Blue Mountain and the Blue Mountain Village area. It's a nice all-year-round recreational area just outside of Toronto, where you can do lots of amazing different activities. I'm going to tell you all about that coming right up. Blue Mountain is a recreational area about two hours outside of Toronto, which includes year-round activities and various resorts and hotels. We're going to break it down into two things. You've got the actual Blue Mountain, but there's also the Blue Mountain Village area. And in the village area, there's dining and the entertainment, and it's right at the base of Blue Mountain. It's open all year long, so you can also enjoy the village after a hike on um, one of the hiking trails over the summer or in the winter after skiing or snowboarding, some of the many runs that they have. So Blue Mountain is probably best known for its winter activities. It's very popular for skiing and snowboarding. It has 42 ski runs. Of those, 11 are easy, which I think is the, the green circle. 16 are more difficult, which is the blue square. They have seven black diamonds, which are the most difficult. And they also have eight double black diamonds, which are expert. They also have 16 ski lifts and three different terrain parks. However, during the summer, there are 20 plus hiking trails open to explore and a bunch of other recreational activities that we'll get into in a second. The skiing here is really nice. Again, it is on the Niagara Escarpment or in that area. So they aren't huge mountains. If you're used to sort of bigger mountains, uh, they're probably less difficult than uh, some of them that you might be used to if you're used to other areas. Now, with that being said, it is rated number one ski resort in Ontario and does actually make a lot of the top list for ski resorts in Canada, but the mountains definitely are not as big as the ones that you get out west. So Aaron had mentioned there's a lot of activities all year round. Let's take a look at the winter activities. They do have your skiing, snowboarding, hike and tube, sleigh rides, snowshoeing, ice skating, and mill pond skating. They have as much stuff to do in the summer as they do in the winter. They have the Montera Golf Course, which is an 18-hole golf course. They have mountain biking trails, the Mill Pond Activity Center, where they've got these uh, sort of the water bikes that you can rent uh, as well as other things. They have the Low and High Ropes Course, if you're interested in that. They also do rock climbing, zip lining, and they've also got this neat little alpine roller coaster that goes through the forest there. And of course, they also have year-round activities. They have the Montera Tennis, which is an indoor tennis facility. They also have the indoor pool called Plunge, which has water slides and so forth. They have the Ridge Runner, and there is also caving if you're interested in that. When we were there, we did a bunch of hiking. It was the fall. The maps are pretty good. These trails, though, they are one way, many of them. So you can either hike up the mountain or down the mountain or you hike up and then down. I know that sounds weird, but I guess it's because the gondola is there as well. So you might have a lot of people gondola up and then walk down. Uh, we Yeah, so fall, leaves are wet. And uh, we definitely, I think I chose a more challenging one and had quite quite the memorable experience trying to get down on some of these wet leaves as we went down the mountain and somehow ended up on the biking trail. But it was definitely a lot of fun. Linda does have a bit of a history of always picking by mistake either the hardest trail or the most difficult trails, uh, even though we're not usually looking for the most difficult ones. So I was, uh, I enjoyed it. The hiking was really nice. Uh, they are well marked for the most part, uh, more so than some of the places that we hiked in uh, Calgary. But uh, yeah, pretty good all around hiking. Just don't go on the, on the, on the mountain biking trails because you don't want to get smacked in the face by a mountain bike. Now on to the Blue Mountain Village. So the Blue Mountain Village is the Apre Ski Area, which is a bunch of different restaurants and stores right at the base of the mountain. So Blue Mountain is the entire complex. However, within Blue Mountain is the Blue Mountain Village. The village is a great mix of food and nightlife and stores. Uh, there's 32 restaurants and food outlets, uh, as well as nightclubs that are available. There's 21 different stores. And while we were there, we tried a few different restaurants. So we ate at a bunch of places. We also did some of the shopping. And so we're going to give you a little bit of a summary as to all of the food that we tried and what the different restaurants were. Again, it, it isn't huge. This isn't sort of a gigantic village area. If you're familiar with Whistler, it's not quite like that. However, it's really nice. And they've really done a great job of it. So we, we very much enjoyed just about all of these restaurants. We'll go a little bit more in depth into them. 
Yeah, we enjoyed a lot of the food that we had here. One of the restaurants we went to was Rusty's Bar and Barbecue. This is located right at the base of the mountain near the gondola. It has a large indoor and outdoor seating area. It's nice and casual, which is great if you've just been hiking or snowboarding. It has a Tex-Mex style theme, lots of sandwiches, wraps, and burgers. What we had when we were there is we ordered the nachos, which were $18, and they were pretty good. We had the Philly cheese steak sandwich, which was $22, and the buffalo chicken sandwich for $19. I wouldn't say anything really blew us away about the food being amazing quality or whatever, but the location was great, and it was nice and casual if you are coming back from a long hike and just want to sit down and have some lunch, and you might not be in the best, you know, your best form at that time. I think really the only thing that surprised us with all of these restaurants is the price. You'll notice that it's a little bit expensive. Do keep in mind, though, this is Canadian dollars and not American dollars. So uh, you have to keep it, remind yourself that it's about 30 percent, about 30 percent cheaper uh, in America. Next, we went to Northwind's Brew Pub and Craft Beer Store. So this is right in the heart of Blue Mountain Village. It is a very modern atmosphere, and it is also a beer store. So if you are staying here or staying on property or, or even off property, you can pick up some beer. There's a bunch of different beers they have here. Uh, we ordered beer pretzels. Those were really good. They came in this like mason jar, which seemed kind of weird. Uh, however, they, you know, they were still really good. We had two smash burgers, so Linda and I both decided to go with a smash burger. Linda had gravy on the side. The burger was $23, and it was $3 for the gravy on the side for the fries. And then I also got the smash burger with cheese and bacon. It was $23 again for the burger, and it was $5 for the cheese and bacon. However, the bacon was really good. I really enjoyed that bacon. The burgers were really, really well done as well. It's not a very large restaurant, so if you are here, uh, do be sure to try to make some sort of reservation if possible when you're there. We were here during COVID, so the outdoor patio uh, actually wasn't open. I think it was raining, but uh, very sort of small restaurant or smaller or sized restaurant. Uh, but it was a really nice atmosphere. The servers were really great, and the food was, was really good, too. We really enjoyed this. It was probably one of our favorite restaurants so far uh, at Blue Mountain. I absolutely agree with Aaron. The Northwinds Brew Pub was my favorite as well. The location is great. I wish it had been a nicer day to sit outside because you look right over the pond back at the Weston Trillium House. You know, you've got the mountain. It's it's very great location. And the food there was really good. Just a nice relaxed environment for sure. And uh, thinking of the Weston Trillium House, we do have a room tour there and we'll be coming out with a resort tour soon. So if that's somewhere you're interested in staying, make sure you check that out. Another restaurant that we tried out is Oliver and Bonaccini Blue Mountain. This is actually right inside the Weston Trillium House. So it's pretty popular, especially if you're staying there. And they do take reservations, which is great, or at least they were while we were there, especially for larger pod parties that you aren't maybe having to wait as long because in, in the high season, it can get very busy everywhere in the, in the hotel and, and in the village as well. And Oliver and Bonaccini is a popular chain of restaurants. So if you've got one in your area, it's going to be pretty much the same sort of expectation in terms of quality. So when we were there, we had the chicken and leek pot stickers. They're $20. We enjoyed those. We got the bread basket for $4.95. We got it to try it. Meh, I wouldn't be paying $5 for it again, but we tried it. The Margarita Pizza was $17.95, and they actually have the wood fire oven there. That was very good, that we really enjoyed the Margarita Pizza. We also got Truffle Fries for $12.95. Truffle Fries are not my favorite. Aaron, Aaron really enjoys them, but I have to say these ones were pretty good. We got them to split, and I think Aaron was hoping by splitting it would be more of an 80-20 and I would have less. But no, we actually ended up going 50-50. Those were very good. And we got the cheddar burger for twenty ninety five as well. So we really enjoyed all the food that we had there. It's great if you're staying at the hotel and you know you just want to be able to go down have a meal, but um, and that they do take reservations. Yeah, I enjoyed the meal that we had here. It's a bit more of a formal ish restaurant. I wouldn't say it's completely formal, but a lot of the the restaurants in the village you can kind of wear your snow pants and so forth if you're skiing or whatever you were just wearing hiking and just get off the mountain, have some food, have something to drink. Some of them are a bit more drinks. Like I think Rusty's was probably a bit more for just like getting a pint and some appetizers. 
but you know Oliver and Bonatine is probably one that's a little bit more formal you'll probably not want to wear your snow pants in there but uh, we, we we enjoyed it we it, not often do we just always enjoy restaurants in hotels they're they're not always the best but this one was really good we really did enjoy it there's also a bunch of smaller shops here, so you can kind of wander around uh, the Blue Mountain Village area. Again, it's not huge. I would say maybe take, like if you went into a bunch of the stores, you could probably spend half a day here, maybe a full day if you had both meals. Uh, so it's not huge, but it's nice to kind of walk around. They've got a bunch of different unique stores. They do have everything you need for skiing or snowboarding or hiking or what have you. You'll be able to pick that up right there. They also have stores like sort of a Healy Hansen store and sort of athletic theme stores. They also have some interactive stores like they have a ceramics painting called Crackadoodle where you can, you know, with kids or, you know, as a as having a bit of a romantic night, you can go and do some pottery and uh, and painting of the pottery. And then they've got a bunch of unique little restaurant uh, stores where you're probably going to find things you don't find everywhere. Kind of those places that, uh, you know, you can find paintings of Collingwood or, you know, they have pillows and stuff that are kind of nice and sort of Canada themed. So they've got a bunch of different stores like that and then of course they have some smaller um some just sort of smaller um variety stores there's a variety store there where you can pick up anything you might need they are kind of um, efficiencies when it comes to a bunch of the different hotels so you can pick up all the food that you need and so they do have variety stores where you can pick up different food that you might need in order to make whatever meal you want to make so you don't have to uh, go to the restaurants and so forth you can just make your own food and then walk around and try the different shopping. Oh, Aaron, I didn't know you thought crafting was a romantic date night. I'm definitely going to make a mental note of that. So what did we think overall? So overall, Blue Mountain and the Blue Mountain Village area provides a lot of great recreational options for just about anyone. A huge you know, focus on having the whole bunch of family entertainment. Although many people uh, may find the mountains smaller, uh, you, I'm sure you're seeing a picture of it right now, they're not, they're not exactly mountains so much as they're kind of large hills. Uh, so people from British Columbia or Quebec, for instance, uh, will probably sort of see the word mountain and then think that is not a mountain. Uh, although we do both ski and snowboard, you can spend a lot of time here enjoying so many other activities. Even though skiing is very, very important and a lot of people go here to do it in Ontario, if you're coming from somewhere else, do the other activities. If, if you, one, are not somebody who skis or snowboards, or two, you're somebody who uh, has potentially better skiing and snowboarding options available to you there's other stuff to do so you know go to the indoor pool enjoy the hotel try some of the different activities that they have and if you're here in the summer there's a whole bunch of different activities as well since you can't ski or snowboard so highly suggest that they also have a bunch of special events like there was this light show slash hike they had at the top of the mountain it was a special ticketed event so you did have to pay extra for it but you take the gondola up and then they've got sort of a walking tour of different lights and so forth and they also right now have Christmas themed events on right now with COVID. I'm sure they're either restricted or it's just uh, sort of Santa Claus who's coming by every once in a while uh, to, you know, sort of through the market. So it's probably not quite as big as it can be. However, they do do special events. So do keep an eye out on those. The Blue Mountain area has definitely done a great job of bringing in different activities so you can go and enjoy all year round. And a special side note, they do have a Starbucks in the village, but it is very busy. When we went looking for our coffee fix, the line was insane. So we passed on that and continuing to walk around, we came across the Royal Magistry Espresso Bar and Bakery. And the picture on the outside had me for sure that it was a s'mores latte. So I thought I got to try that. Loving sweet food and went in and got it. And the latte itself may not have been the best, but it was epic. They lined the cup with milk, uh, white chocolate, marshmallows, whipped cream, chocolate. If you got a sweet tooth, definitely worth trying it. But I would be going back for next time we're there to have whatever different latte they've got. I think that they did a great job and it was a lot of fun just sort of having a little different twist on it. Yeah, Linda doesn't actually drink coffee for coffee. Uh, just like, you know, those ice cream places that you go to where you put whatever toppings on your ice cream that you want. Uh, Linda doesn't go there for ice cream. She goes there for the toppings. So she'll have like 
a teaspoon of ice cream and then an entire bowl of like gummy bears and Oreos and everything else. So that if you're looking for coffee, coffee, I don't think we would we would weigh in on that one. But if you're looking for a fun, fancy drink that has a bunch of really fun toppings and stuff on it, uh, Linda will not steer you wrong on that one. So also, there are a few spas if you're interested in that and you want to have a spa day. They have the Scandinavian Spa, which is located nearby, and there's also spas in the hotels. So if you're interested in that, that is also another option that you can have here within the village area. Also, we would state that there are a few electric vehicle chargers. So if you have an electric vehicle or you're coming in from Toronto, uh, you can charge your electric vehicle. There was more in the Westin. We'll talk about that in our Westin Trillium House review. We have done a room tour for it. So if you're interested in staying here, then go ahead and check out the Westin uh, Trillium House room tour that we have. And we also have a room tour for the Blue Mountain Inn. Uh, so check that out as well. They should be popping up on your screen right now. So there you have it. That is the Blue Mountain Inn and Blue Mountain Village areas. Again, we highly recommend coming here. If you're coming in from somewhere else and you're interested in trying this, we would definitely recommend it. If you live in Ontario, also a great break. They are open during COVID, of course, with the standard precautions that we have for Ontario right now. And that's it. That is Blue Mountain. Thank you very much for watching and happy travels. Mm -hmm.